Hmm. Hi, everybody. <laughs> wow, good to see you all here. Everybody I can see here in Zoom. We've got quite a crowd. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Peter. Um, welcome to the movie workshop I'll be hosting today. We have a movie I haven't seen before, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, um, so yeah, I can just um, let you guys know how the day is going to uh, flow for those who are new. So we have our movie with David to start, and uh, then afterwards we take a 10 minute break. And then we have uh, breakout rooms for you to share any emotions or experiences you had with the movie. And uh, then afterwards we'll have a 45 minute break and then a Q&A session with me. So I'll pass it over to you now, David. Thank you, Pete. Welcome everyone. <laughs> We are going down the rabbit hole today. <laughs> I hope you enjoy as much as I do the demystifying of everything. Today we're going to demystify time and space. We're going to demystify relationships, <laughs> demystify grievances and judgments. Yeah, I think you'll be very happy uh, with the journey that Jesus is taking us on today. He is taking us way down the rabbit hole. And uh, I have actually really felt the presence these last couple of days of Albert Einstein. <laughs> really, Einstein is with us so strong today because uh, three of the main characters in the movie are uh, are either scientists or mathematicians or a little bit of both. Uh, they're all interested in finding meaning, uh, which every true scientist just wants to find meaning. That's their pathway to truth, you know. You don't have to take religion. You could take quantum physics if you want to do that. You could take art. You could take music. You could take many, many pathways down to the realization that all of us are one, and God is one, and love is all that there is. So uh, this movie today, uh, first of all, the, the title of the movie uh, is quite amazing. It's called I'll Follow You Down. <clears throat> when I saw the title, that kind of grabbed my attention. And of course, the movie is, is a trip into the mind, uh, is how we always use it. And... It's so beautiful because I'll follow you down. I thought immediately of Jesus taking our hand and saying, come with me. I'll follow you down. We'll go down deep into your mind. We'll go down through the dark shadows. We'll go past the unconscious beliefs. And we're going all the way on a trip to the light. We're going all the way back to the I am presence before time seemed to be the I am presence of before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus is taking us today with the movie. He's taking us down to the I am. <laughs> it's it's really quite spectacular. And I have to say, I, I really feel it's uh, Jesus and Albert Einstein are our guides today. <laughs> I, we haven't had Albert uh, taking us down the rabbit hole, but Let's admit it, you know, around the early 1900s, there was a group of scientists, uh, including Albert Einstein, that were the first quantum physicists. So quantum physics seemed to have its birth, really started to really be born in the early 1900s. And here we are in 2022. It's about time we grasp what they were talking about in 1903. <laughs> you know, it's about time we... We take it in. We start to say, okay, we're ready. We're ready. Show us the way, Albert and Jesus. Uh, you are going to be our guides today. Take us down the rabbit hole. Uh, so Albert Einstein uh, is, is quite famous for a number of quotes that he had. I, I think of, uh, there were so many that I was really touched by, but, but actually, uh, I'll read some of those to you, but before I do, I always like to start off with the relevancy of, of the themes, the movie themes that you voted for. And these themes are the ones that we pray on and we are inspired by and given a movie that will help us 
actually experience what the themes are in an actual direct experience, not uh, just a theory or a concept, but an actual experience. So the top three vote getters this week, number one is let go of everything I think I know. <laughs> That's a good one. That's going to take some trust because let go of everything I think I know from my past learning means I have to go down the rabbit hole and go into a state of, of uh, opening my mind to be shown something brand new. Maybe it's not so new after all. Maybe it's what's always been so, and I just covered it over in my mind. So it's always been there, but it was just covered by a lot of uh, shadows that were put in, in place to blind me from the truth. As Morpheus told Neo in The Matrix, the world was made to, to be pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. So we have to let go of everything I think I know. That's definitely the number one poll uh, recipient, it's 67 votes. Coming in number two, trusting in the miracle above all else. If you're gonna let go of everything you think you know in your mind, that will seem scary unless you have something to replace everything that you think you know. And I mean, moment by moment, replace everything that you think you know. And that's what a miracle is. A miracle is like a glimpse of eternity, a miracle uh, brings peace to your mind immediately. And that's why our book is called A Course in Miracles, because miracles are the most helpful thing for us as we move toward the light. Uh, Jesus says revelatory experiences are, they actually reveal the truth uh, and they reveal the light, but, but they're very, very rare. And the reason they're so rare is the mind is terrified of the light. So Jesus is not going to be sending us light if it will fry our mind <laughs> or what we believe is our mind. He's not going to over, over uh, light us. He's, he's just going to let us get little glimpses, little instances of seeing the false as false before the light dawns in our mind because he doesn't want to scare us. He says, you're not going to be hurled into the truth we're hurled into the light. And so we aren't, we aren't wanting to be hurled, we want to be gently taken <laughs> into the light. And that's why we need, need the miracles. The third one is leaping into the unknown. This movie is a good one for leaping into the unknown. Uh, for most people, that's, that's a bit scary because it sounds a bit risky, like, well, all I've ever known, seemingly, is my experiences in time and space. And Jesus is telling us, yeah, these are all false memories, but you've become so accustomed to the false memories, you've become so addicted to the false images, that now the unknown scares you. And at one point in the text, he, he says, it would be important to be a little more open-minded. Why do you think that just because you, you don't know it in awareness that it's scary? Why do you think the universe or the, the creator that's even beyond this universe is scary when you don't remember directly what that experience is? You, you've just prejudged it as scary. <laughs> and so when people say we're going into the unknown or we're gonna take a leap into the unknown, most people go, ooh, butterflies, butterflies, scary, scary. Uh, that people don't like to be surprised <laughs> in that way. They don't mind a little surprise, but but the unknown is too big of surprise. <laughs> so so the mind says, whoa, no big surprises. You know, let me just have my little life. Don't don't go. Don't go blowing away my, my everything I think I know. And yet Jesus knows that we will be sublimely happy by what we think is the unknown because it's actually the only thing that we can know. 
we can't really know of time and space, but we can know God. So God is, is the know. Now those, those three are gonna be our main three themes. And I told you I'd give you some, some Einstein quotes uh, because Einstein was a quantum physicist who was a scientist on the cusp of huge breakthroughs, breakthroughs of Newtonian science. He, he opened up and went past uh, Newtonian physics. And there was a, a group of uh, quantum scientists who got interested in, in particles. They got interested in uh, the quantum realm, quantum mechanics. They got interested in how everything was connected, which is basically what the quantum field is. It's the forgiven world, the happy dream that Jesus talks about, where everything is connected. And even for Einstein, that was a little frightening. He, he called the, the connectedness a spooky action at a distance. <laughs> so when Einstein calls something spooky, he's even spooked. <laughs> he's one of the greatest scientists of all time, but he was spooked by what he found <laughs> because it, it doesn't relate to our everyday perceptions. He's, he, he went a little bit down the rabbit hole and he went and got others and they started to talk about their new quantum physics uh, science, but they were too afraid to publish their papers because they felt they would be castrated and, and exiled from science. So they were afraid to publish their results because they were so astonishing. And we know how that is with pioneers and forerunners. There's a bit of fear of, are people gonna like me? If, if what I share overturns everything uh, that I have believed in and everything everybody else has believed in, then I might be seen as a heretic if I start to publish these results. So some of you know uh, Einstein, he's from uh, Germany, but, but he uh, was in Princeton, New Jersey at a famous uh, university, Princeton. And in this movie, uh, we're going to hear about Princeton, New Jersey, and we're going to have a little bit of time travel, uh, just a little bit, through a wormhole back to 1946 Princeton University, from modern day Princeton University back to 1946. What did Einstein have to say that's so exciting? Well, here's what Einstein said about a human being. Here's a scientist who's commenting on a human being. <laughs> he says, a human being is part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts, and his feelings as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. <laughs> So whenever you have a scientist that's talking about an optical delusion of consciousness, they're onto it. They're onto it because Jesus tells us consciousness was the first split after the separation. It's the domain of the ego. And so here we have Albert Einstein calling it an optical delusion of consciousness. In other words, he was aware there was something greater than the world, greater than time and space, and, and this sense of deep meaning and connectedness and vast intelligence that was far beyond the everyday perceptions of, we could say, split mind or, or consciousness. Here's another thing that Einstein said. He said, people like us who believe in physics know that the distinction between past present and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. <laughs> he was aware that the linear progression past, present, future was only a persistently stubborn illusion. And of course, it, Jesus tells us in A Course in Miracles that you're trying to force continuity on linear time. You're trying, the ego is trying to make up a construct all I went through and, and all it was just to come and realize that beingness 
isness is God given. It's it's eternal. It has no beginning and no end. There's another quote from Einstein. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use when we created them. <laughs> we have to be willing to let go of the thoughts in our mind of time and space. All of our pursuits, our roles, our ambitions, our future goals are all part of an optical delusion of consciousness. And Einstein knew it. And Einstein was so aware, he knew that, that time wasn't like an absolute, but time was relative, time was very subjective. Of course, Einstein got into looking at black holes and gravity and the, and the, the, the experience of time experienced in black hole is very different than the way we experience time on Earth because of the gravitational field is so intense in a black hole. I saw my friend Nana, she was saying today, David, I want to see your commentary on interstellar. Well, this is a good forerunner for going into interstellar with Matthew Mahanahi and, and that beautiful cast that did that. That's an amazing movie. But basically, what Einstein was teaching us is that time isn't what we think it is. Time is an invention and it's entirely relative and subjective. Uh, it's not an absolute. It's not, it's not an eternal creation and time varies. And so we could say that time is just a perception. And most of us can, can say that there's sometimes when we're so happy and joyful that we lose track of the passage of time. We're shocked sometimes when we look at the clock, like where, where did it all go? <laughs> We were just unaware of the passage of time because our attention was in, in the miracle. We were in the moment. We lost track of time. And then we just say, oh, well, we'll just, I'll just move on. But, but Einstein really uh, was onto something there. Einstein said the only reason for time is so that everything doesn't happen at once. <laughs> I'm going to read that, that one again. Whoa, Albert, the only reason for time is so that everything doesn't happen at once. So, you know, if you've listened to me over the years, how I say time is simultaneous. It's not like there's parallel universes. It's all happening at the same time. It's not really linear. Even some of the great uh, quantum scientists have, have tried to map it out. Uh, uh, I remember Brian Green, I believe his name was, uh, mapped out time to look like a loaf of bread. But Jesus is saying, no, it's actually simultaneous. And you, there would be no need for time in the present moment because it's all here <laughs> in the present moment. And when, when our mind tries to figure out time, we're already, already going down the ego's uh, tricks because it's, a, it's an invention. It's fiction. Uh, even if we dress it up and we talk about reincarnation or parallel universes, they're not parallel or simultaneous. And reincarnation wouldn't make any sense if everything is happening at the same time. You see, you wouldn't be interested in what you were in a past life if you realized there is no past. <laughs> and you wouldn't be concerned about your future lives because there are no future lives. Everything is simultaneous. And that's, that's a difficult one for the mind, the sleeping mind to grasp. That's one of those ideas where you shake your head and you look at Jesus and like, show me. <laughs> so he's going to today. <laughs> he's, he's giving us a good movie to uh, show us that time is simultaneous. That's another quote Albert Einstein said. Many of you know this one. There are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. <laughs> Don't you love it? Is that a scientist or what? This is like a divine scientist. He's like an angel scientist. He's, he's making a good name for scientists of all time. Because <laughs> that's a pathway to God. And finally, 
the thing that fits with our uh, our first theme today is let let go of everything I think I know. Well, what would Albert Einstein have say about that? Because he was an eminent scientist who everybody respected his ideas, and over the the decades, uh, actually this the the decade, the century has passed, and his ideas just still today are being shown to be correct. I mean, every every couple of years, I'll hear a scientist, physicist say, wow, Einstein was correct. <laughs> every, every two or three years, another scientist goes, wow, Einstein had it right again. Uh, at the time, you know, he was far, far out, like John Denver would say, far out, man. I mean, to most of the scientists of his of his life, he was far out, but I think he was far in. <laughs> he was far inward. <laughs> he was much farther inward than than most of science. So in keeping with our theme, let go of everything I think I know, Albert Einstein said, a true genius admits that he or she knows nothing. Wow. That's an... You have not heard that one. A true genius admits that he or she knows nothing. That sounds like Einstein, you are Zen. You were you were doing the Zen thing before Zen became popular. <laughs> you, you, you were really showing us. So, so the movie today uh, has some very uh, well-known actors and actresses in. Uh, some of you know Haley Joel Osment uh, from, from his movies. Uh, of course, with the famous Bruce Willis movie. Uh, there's, there's lots of them. Um, and the cast is, is amazing, but I'll give you a little bit of setup so that you're, you're kind of aware of, of the situation. This movie will, will use relationships and it will use science in a way that starts to open our mind to another way of looking at the world. So in this movie, Rufus Sewell, who played in Dark City, some of you, Laverne, you remember Dark, Dark City, Rufus Sewell, he was the main character. He was going deeper and deeper, waking up from this dark world of strangers, uh, and having the upside down world turned right side up to the light. So everything went bright. And basically, that was probably one of the best movies. I think that's probably the best Course in Miracles movie. If you wanted to see a pictorial representation of the teachings of A Course in Miracles, Dark City is probably the best movie that shows all the aspects of the metaphysics of A Course in Miracles. Now, Rufus Sewell is in this movie as well, and he's going to be the one that does the time traveling. He's a scientist who is going to go through a wormhole and, and go back to Princeton in 1946, because even though he goes to Princeton, he lives in Toronto with his wife and his son, and goes to Princeton, New Jersey for uh, conferences, scientific conferences. And he's going to go for a conference and then he's going to reenact um, a lot of his, his scientific uh, discoveries in terms of going through this wormhole because he wants to go back and meet Albert Einstein. Uh, which is, I mean, for a lot of scientists, that would be kind of a thing to do. If you could go through a wormhole, some people would want to go off and travel to different parts of the cosmos. But a lot of scientists would just want something practical, like let me go back in time and have a nice chat with Albert, <laughs> Albert Einstein, is part of his search for truth and search for meaning. Now, in this movie, Rufus Sewell is, is playing Gabe. And I think Gabe is such a beautiful name because Gabe is short for Gabriel. I think of the angel Gabriel. Jesus always, he's got everybody having a fun name. And so this is Gabe. 
Uh, he's a scientist, and he's going to do a little wormhole travel back to with his plan to go back and, and meet Albert Einstein in 1946. His wife is Marika, and she's a very, very loving wife and a loving mother, and she adores her husband, and uh, she's going to take him to the airport along with their son. And their son's name is Errol, E-R-O-L. And so when they go and drop off uh, Gabe, basically, you can feel like there's something going on. There's maybe some things that are unspoken. That's the human condition. That's the problem with all of our relationships is we have private minds and private thoughts and we hide things. If we simply would not hide anything from ever, anyone, we would be happy as a lark. <laughs> Imagine... Imagine having relationships in which there were no secrets. Imagine that you just could kind of look at each other and know each other's thoughts and, and perfectly love and accept uh, everything and everyone for exactly who they are without any need to hide, hide thoughts, no, no secrets. So in this family, we can see that with this airport scene, you can feel there's there's much love there, and there's also there's some um, private thoughts and some emotions going on underneath. Um, and and I would say the only pain we ever carry with us is is what we withhold in our mind. If you become an open vessel and vehicle for extending and letting the love and the ideas pour freely from you and through you out and radiate to the whole world, you will soon find yourself in total communication with every everyone and everything. Because it, just the thought of being separate from others is a tormenting thought. It's very unnatural to think that we're separate from each other. It's, it's much more natural to think we're the same one. Because as soon as you start thinking we're all the same one, then you start to notice your thoughts. And any thoughts that are out of alignment with that oneness, that connection, they stand out. They're grievances. They need to be released. So in this movie, um, we're going to see a, a little family situation, a cute little Toronto family, husband, Gabe, wife, Marika and their son Earl, and they've got a cute little family up in Toronto. And then as we move through the movie, we're going to see 12 years later um, that when Gabe vanishes, just completely vanishes uh, when he goes to Princeton, nobody knows why. And all of the heartbreak, the abandonment, the, the feeling of loss, the feeling of missing, like missing your father, missing your husband, all of the human emotions that are tied into a break in a relationship. In this case, just the husband, Gabe, he just disappears. So you have this whole sense of not knowing. Nobody knows where he went, why he went, you you know, it brings up a lot of uncertainty and hurt when when you think of a very close loved one completely just disappearing without a trace. But this is what happens if you go into a wormhole and don't come back. <laughs> At least in Star Trek, they go through wormholes, but they'd always get out. <laughs> they get in and they get out. And and yet it stirs things up for the human psyche when someone disappears without a trace. You know, that just brings in a lot of, of flushes up uncertainty. And, and that's because the belief in this world in linear time is a construct. And it's a construct made up by the ego to blind you from knowing who you really are as an eternal creation of God, to blind you from knowing the I am presence. The world is a veil 
drawn across the mind to keep it from knowing that it's it's love and light. And it's it seems to be quite a sneaky veil because there's a lot of great non-dual teachings throughout the centuries that tell us that the, the true nature of reality is eternal. But if you're sleeping and dreaming of this world, that is not in direct experience. What's indirect experience is more the construct of linear time. So linear time is was made by the ego to, to keep you from knowing who you really are. And it's a very deceptive mechanism because when you forget who you are, you believe in separation, abandonment, rejection, and if I can be a little scientific with it, all of you now, I'm going to be metaphysical and scientific, that Jesus was teaching us that the Father and I are one. Uh, he was teaching us that, that in creation, that God and the creation of God, which is the Christ, are one spirit, and cause, God, and effect, Christ, are together. The Father and I are one. He was speaking from a direct experience that the creator and the creation are actually together. Now, if cause and effect are together, then this world is impossible. Because this world is the belief that the effect, the Christ, can leave the, leave the creator and go off into time and space and take on a new identity, a flesh identity, an identity of a body which God didn't create and God doesn't even know about. So this is a sneaky dream, you know, where you believe you're separated from your creator, and yet this puff of nothingness called the ego has generated a giant virtual reality, which isn't reality at all. It's just a construct of time and space. Well, Einstein came along and Einstein he started to discover that, that what we call past, present, and future is not actually a reality. It's actually an illusion that, that we're mesmerized. We've been mesmerized by an illusion of time. And that interstellar movie that you were mentioning, Nana, that is a good example of taking the same, like this movie, took relationships, father-son relationship, or father-daughter relationship in there, in Interstellar, and then he goes off, and he goes near a black hole, and then when he comes back, <laughs> he missed the whole childhood of with his daughter, because the perception of time is so vastly different. So in this movie, we're going to see that all of the hurt and pain and suffering that is experienced by all the characters is all based on the belief that the, that the effect of God can separate off from the cause. And then Jesus tells us the ego splits apart cause and effect, and then it turns it around so that the world, the projected world, seems to be the cause of how you feel. Uh, if you seem to lose your job or get disconnected from a loved one, if you seem to have a disease, if you seem to have things happen to you in time and space, the ego says, ah, that's why you feel so bad, because the world is after you. <laughs> Storms are after you, diseases are after you, plagues are after you, starvation is after you, emotional breakups, uh, you try to find some some morsel of love by having a relationship in this world, and then over time, it it doesn't always go well. People seem to leave. People seem to get sick and die. People seem to be at the mercy of forces like wars or uh, tidal waves or disasters. It's and the underlying basis is the ego split off cause and effect, and then it turned it around so that the world seems to be doing something to you. The characters have done something to you. In, in the sleeping mind, 
it believes it's the victim of a world that's outside of itself, not understanding that all of this is made up to keep you from knowing who you really are. And Jesus was a great way shower because he went, he went through and past linear time to realize that our reality is heaven. Our reality still is with God. And that right now in this instant, there is a present cause that you can know, and that present cause is God. Wow. <laughs> and God is, Jesus tells us, God is the only cause. The ego is not a real cause. If you believe in the ego, it will project and generate unreal effects because the, un the ego is an unreal belief. You see, the belief in separation. God has nothing to do with separation. But the ego is an unreal cause, and then you perceive a world of unreal effects, and you believe that they're real, because in your mind you believe the cause is real. You see how it works? And, and what Jesus is telling us is, the only cause that there is, is God. God is the only cause, and God's effects are with that cause. Cause and effect are together. Christ can never leave the mind of God, and the creations of perfection can never leave that perfect creator of perfection. So this world is what Mary Baker Eddy calls mesmerism. It's fantasy. It's fiction. It can't be who you really are. Why would God create pain and suffering and sickness and death? Why would a God of pure love have anything to do with these kind of things? Jesus is saying, no, it's just a simple matter of cause and effect. Now, Einstein was onto it because the quantum physicists discovered that there was something beyond time. Uh, they really were kind of uh, mystified by it. They, they began discovering this, this field, sounded like a like a Rumi poem, there's a field, I'll meet you there. They found this field of absolute connectedness where everything was pure energy and everything was connected. They didn't know what it was. <laughs> they were like, oh my gosh. But they knew that this thing we call time was not, was not real. And, and Einstein, you can imagine why they didn't want to publish their papers. I mean, if, there were many other mystics and saints back in India that were saying the same thing that the scientists were saying, but the scientists were not aware of the mystics and saints in India. <laughs> you know, they thought they discovered something new, but there really is nothing new in this world. It's, it's all old. <laughs> it's just the past. But they were afraid for their careers. They were afraid for their families that if they would publish what they found, they would be out of a job. <laughs> That's what happened to David Bohm. Some of you know that there was a beautiful scientist named, named David Bohm, and, and uh, he, uh, he, he wanted to hang out with Einstein. He actually went over to Princeton to be there, to live there for a while. And then um, David Bohm was one of these scientists that, they did these double split experiments with these particles, firing these particles through these little slits. And it was the most mystifying uh, experiment that the scientists had ever done because they couldn't explain it. Well, David Bohm spent uh, some decades explaining what was happening with the double slit experiment. And his good buddy, Albert Einstein, they had a lot of interesting dialogues on this whole thing. And then later on, David Bohm had amazing dialogues with Krishnamurti. If you ever wanna really see some fun dialogues, just check out a scientist and Krishnamurti <laughs> talking about all the topics that you could ever imagine. Uh, very exciting. But what we're gonna see in the movie today is that we're going to pay attention to the characters because the characters have hidden thoughts and emotions, and they don't really know why they're feeling them. They will attribute it to, uh, basically, to Gabe disappearing. 
And, and if any of you have ever had a dog or a cat or a pet who just disappeared without a trace, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what kind of emotions come up, even if you have a pet that disappears without explanation. You can imagine how it goes if it's your husband with no trace and no explanation. You know, wow, it will bring up all your unconscious beliefs. Things that you didn't even know you believed in will come up. You may be suicidal. You may have, you may try to uh, distract yourself with things because of the, the emotional pain. But Jesus will be teaching us today, it's all coming about because of one belief. And that one belief is the ego. The belief that, that the, uh, an effect of God can leave God and enter a world where there's causes and effects. Like for every action, there's a reaction. You know, all the cause-effect relationships of this world which Jesus calls spurious, they're not real. But if you believe in them, then you will experience all of the dark emotions from this ego belief. You're not really experiencing your real emotions, which is just love and joy and happiness, peace, but you are experiencing the ego's emotions when you believe in it. And that's why A Course in Miracles is about learning to not believe in the ego. It's like we're saying to Jesus, Jesus, say it isn't so. Say it isn't so. Say pain and suffering, betrayal, abandonment, rejection. Say it isn't so. And Jesus is like, yes, my friend. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you're, on, you're on the right track. It isn't so. <laughs> he says, I'll say it. It isn't so. But we have to allow the Spirit to use our relationships to go down, like follow, I'll follow you down, Jesus. I'll follow you down all the way to the light. And this movie is going to help us today. So I will be back in throughout the movie uh, with commentary and uh, I'll bring in some beautiful course quotes from Jesus that will help us on our journey today. So enjoy the movie uh, and remember, you have a creator who has never left. <laughs> you have a cause who is still with the effect, the Christ. And nothing can change that. Nothing can change eternal love. Okay, here we go.